is sensuality without sensibleness. Sensibleness. There are people that live the life of, you know, they eat and they drink and they have pleasure and they rub flesh with flesh and, you know, that's all they do. But then they're not sensible. Where does this drive me? If I eat all that, I become obese and I become overweight, where does that lead me? If I get this and I have, uh, you know, disease uh, out of that pleasure, where does that lead me? They never think sensuality without sensibleness. But the Lord is calling us, he says, your life will not be a waste. I said your life will not be a waste. And you will look at life and you understand that the life you live now is to be in service to other people so that you'll not be like this foolish man. We're seeing the man on the wrong path. I want to turn now to the man on the right path. I want to talk to you. I said I want to talk about you. I said I want to talk about you. We're not going to the man on the right path. We're looking at point number two now. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. The responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. That word responsibility, I want you to break that word responsibility into two. Response ability. Response ability. The Lord is giving you a mandate. It's giving you a goal. It's giving you a direction to follow. And it gives you the ability to respond. And you respond in an able manner. In a way that is quantitative, qualitative, measurable. You respond with the divine ability the Lord has given you, the responsibility of pursuing the mandate of our maker. I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 43. We're looking at verse 7. Even everyone that is called by my name, everyone without exception, I pray you will fit in. You will fit in. I will fit in. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. You will bring glory to God. Your talent will bring glory to God. Your ability will bring glory to God. Your vision, your focus will bring glory to God. And your activities, your actions, your habits, everything you do will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. Your inventions will bring glory to God. Your helping other people will bring glory to God. Your impact in the lives of other people who are suffering in our world will bring glory to God in Jesus' name. Your life will no more be selfish. My life will no more be selfish. Your life will no more be self-centered. My life will no more be self-centered. He created you for a purpose. Everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him. Do you accept that? Is that true? Did he create you? Yes. Did you create yourself? No. Did Satan create you? No. Did those uh, gang, uh, members of the gang, did they create you? No. How is it that those gangs will be so selfish and take who they have not created and then use for their purpose and then draw you away, snatch you away from the one who has created you and say forget about the creator. Forget about your maker. Forget about the one that gave his only begotten son for you, that you'll not perish but have everlasting life. And he said, forget about your benefactor. And then just live for them. That's selfish. I will not be their slave. I will not be their captive. 
I will not be a, their errand boy, their errand girl. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, yes, I have made him. The Lord has made you. Now, when the Lord made Adam and Eve, they did the wrong thing. They became a mess. They became mediocres. They became miscreants. And then the Lord came to them again so that he can bring them back to the original position he created them. That's why he sent Jesus. So that as your life is now, maybe your life is messed up. The Lord made you. But now look at your condition. Look at your thoughts. Look at your life. Look at your direction. Look at who you are. That's why we're here. That instead of being a misfit, I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. I will not be a misfit. What does he do to bring you back to the place he made before? Number one, he melts you. Melts you. You see, when you hear something uh, that makes you to think, that's right. Am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Is this what I should be at this age? With a Bible in my hand, with a God in heaven, with a Christ who died for me, and with all these speakers who are talking to me, and everybody wants my development and growth. How am I like this? Number one, he melts you. Number two, he molds you. After melting you, you see, if that rod of iron remains like it is, without going through the fire of melting, you cannot mold it to the right shape, but he melts you, then he molds you. Then he makes, that means he corrects the things that were wrong. That's why he says, don't go that way, he's mending you. That's why he says, don't talk that way, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't drink that thing, it's mending you. That's why he says, don't smoke that thing, it's mending you. He melts you. He molds you. He makes you. He monitors you. He wants to know, I want to make him, I want to get him back to the original. Many people, they are just duplicates, and they are not good duplicates at that. You're a duplicate of this and duplicate of that, and then you don't have a singular life that means much to you, much to your family, much to your community. But then uh, the Lord now says, he monitors you. He says, come back, come back. That's not the way. He says, go to the right. This is the way. Walk ye therein. He monitors you. He mentors you. That's why he sends people across your way that will teach you. That's why he sends people across your way that will make you stand up straight. That's why he sends messages up to you saying, don't allow this year to go again like last year went. And so he mentors you. He tells you, he helps you to be what you ought to be. And I pray as the Lord has come to remodel your life, I pray you will not say no to the Lord in Jesus' name. And then he models you. He wants you to be a trophy. He wants you to be somebody other people can look up to. And the Lord will say, that's a model. Follow after his life, that's a hero. Follow after his life, that's a champion. Follow after his life, that's a conqueror. I follow after his life. And the Lord, through this period, and even today, will make you a model in Jesus' name. And then he makes you a master. 
that you master, he masters you, and then you are able to master other things in your life with great mastery that will get you back to where he wanted you to be. And it says, even everyone that is called by my name, for I, the almighty I, the creator I, the reformer I, the recreator I, have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, he said, these people, these people have I formed for myself. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. Are you part of the people? Yes. Or are you? Amen. 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 I'm so happy for you. New things are going to begin to happen in your life. New direction in your life. New power in your life. Whatever has become a mess of life, of a life in you, the Lord is going to go through the process of remaking you all over again in Jesus' name. And as he melts you, don't dodge. As he melts you, don't reject. As he melts you down so he can mold you, don't kick. And as he molds you to the image and to the picture and to the perfect pattern he wants in your life, don't say, I don't want that. He's going to make the best out of you in Jesus' name. And as he mends your life, as he monitors your life, as he mentors your life, and as he makes you the object of praise, you are going to be from tonight, you'll say yes to God. I say yes to God. With your hands raised, I say yes to God. With your hands up to heavens, I say yes to God. And so now, the Lord is going to give you a new ability. What you couldn't do before, you will do. He's going to give you new wisdom. He's going to give you new energy. He's going to give you new skill. And that new energy and that new skill and that new personality that will stand firm and stand erect and then face the future and know I have a goal and it's getting you to the peak, you will fly and you'll get to the mountain top in Jesus' name. I come to point number three now. Point number three, our reassurance while pursuing his mission towards men. Our reassurance. What reassurance has the Lord given you? Number one, he says, I will help you. Amen. Number two, he says, I will heal you. Amen. I didn't hear your amen on that one. Yeah. Number three, he says, I will hear you. Amen. Any cry, any call, you send an OSOS to heaven. He says, I'm always here for you. From this day, he will hear every prayer of your heart. Amen. Number four, he will hold you. You will not fall. Amen. You will not fall. Amen. Strength, ability, agility, energy will come from heaven and the Lord will hold you in Jesus' name. Five, I will hide you. When trouble is reaching, uh, when there's calamity, there are problems, there are pandemic, there are every bad thing there, the Lord will hide you in his pavilion. I will hedge you. Everything you have, the Lord will set a hedge around you that the enemy will not touch you. And the powers of darkness will not touch you. They will not touch your brain. <laughs> Somebody said, every time I'm going for exam, my brain gets hot. That's in the past. From now on, that brain will not get hot. 
every time I'm going for an interview, every time I'm going for an interview like that, that's when a problem crops up at home. Myself and my wife, myself and my parents, we cannot see eye to eye. And it comes every time I'm going for an interview. And then when I get to the interview, I'm all confused and, you know, I'm not able to answer well. That's the past. That will not happen to you anymore. I will hedge you and then I will honor you. God has said he's going to help you. Look at Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am thy God. That is if you become a child of God you give yourself to the Lord. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Underline that. I will help thee. Help will always come from above for you in Jesus' name. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. I see somebody here tonight. This year, you will not fall again. Yeah. You will not fail again. Yeah. You will not falter. You will not miss your way in Jesus' name. Number one, I will help you. Number two, I will heal you. Anytime, if you are sick, normally the Lord will keep you in good health. I said the Lord will keep you in good health. But should in case any time sickness knocks at your door, you will not go and answer the door. You say, Christ, who abides in you, answer the door for me. And then when Christ answers the door for you, that sickness, that infirmity will flee away in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 30, and I'm reading from verse 17. It says, for I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds. I will heal thee of thy wounds. If you have any wound that has not healed for many years, it will heal you tonight. If you have any wound inside your intestine that you call ulcer, it will heal you tonight. If you have anyone and is bringing out, um, you know, pause, whatever, I've tried and tried about applied notion or whatever, tonight I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Then at number three now, I will hear me. Your prayer tonight, it will hear you. I say your prayer tonight, it will hear you. Look at Job chapter 22, verse 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him, and he shall hear thee. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy verse. Look at verse 28. It says, and thou shalt decree a thing. You will not beg. You will not cry. You know, when uh, the captain of an army or the military government wants to decree something, you know, uh, the captain and the major general does not come over the radio, over the television, and then he's crying and crying and he's saying, uh, I demand this, I declare this, and crying. Uh -uh. You know, stand like a soldier tonight. As king's king that knows. Here is my father, and this is what my father wants. And with the voice of assurance, you will decree a thing, it shall be established unto thee. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. And then he says, number four, he says, he will hold thee. He will hold your hand. I said he will hold your hand. I said he will hold your hand. I said chapter 41, verse 13, for I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy hand. He the Lord your God. Make him your Lord. Make him your God. Say he's my redeemer, he's my savior. And I surrender myself, my life totally unto him. 
and then I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Number five, this that it will hide you. Psalm 27, verse 5. Psalm 27, verse 5. For in the time of trouble, it will hide me in his pavilion. He will hide you in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Number six, he will hedge you. That Satan will not be able to touch everything he has provided for you. Job chapter 1 verse 10. Has thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side and thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land that's me I said that's me I said that's me now it will honor you can you think, can you think of if the president of our country will single you out and honor you? What an honor. Can you think if the governor of our state will be searching for you and then says, I will honor you? Can you think if the university, the, the BC will be looking for you and they single you out? I will, I will honor you. Can you think if the uh, president of the most powerful nation in the world will uh, you know search for you and say i will i will honor you now can you think if the king of kings and the lord of lords if our creator our redeemer if the god of heaven singles you out and he says i will honor you i about that i said i about that will you draw back and say no i don't want honor you say, no, Lord, keep your honor. I don't want your honor. I don't think you'll do that. I think you'll run to the Lord and say, Lord, I've been waiting for that. I want that honor from heaven. That honor will bring every good thing in your life in Jesus' name. In Psalm, in Psalm 91, verse 15, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. You are not alone anymore. I will deliver him and honor him. And honor him. And honor him. There was somebody. He had an enemy. An enemy that set gallows for him. And his friends and family, they said, go to the king and tell the king you demand the life of this man your enemy come and hang him there and then the man rose up early in the morning and he went to the king and the king said who is there waiting for me and he said it's so and so he said let him come in and then before he said what he wanted to say the king said now i want to honor somebody what do you think I should do to the man I want to honor? And this man said, get the horse, your right arm, decorate it, and then your garb of royalty put upon that man and let the next man take him around the town and say, this is the man that the king has decided to honor. And then he said to Haman, get up and do that for Mordecai, your enemy. The king of kings and the lord of lords has made announcement all over heaven, all over the earth. I want to honor a boy. I want to honor a girl. I want to honor a young man, a young woman. I want to honor somebody there. And is asking the angels, what should I do to that man, to that woman? I am going to honor. And then uh, they said, the man you want to honor, lift him up. Let him have a right and let him go through the whole world and give him the best position in life and give him the best position in his country and give him the best position in the universe. And God said, that is what I will do to that man. 
to that woman and is talking about you, the Lord will honor you. Where are you? Where are you? Today, today has become a turning point in your life in Jesus' name. Now, please, now, please, wait for me, wait for me, sit down first, sit down first, wait for me. I know that honor has come for you. I know that power has come for you. But, uh, you know, let me go through, let me go through my, you know, usual thing uh, to bring a special blessing to special people here. Heads bowed and eyes closed. You want to come to this God and you want to come to this one who is thinking the best of you, who is planning the best for you. You have been far away. He wants to draw you near and you want to draw near and you want to say, Jesus, be my Savior. Jesus, be my Lord. If you will confess you with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus rose from the dead, he says, thou shalt be saved. You will be saved. Salvation is coming to you right now. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. You want to connect with this God who will give you a purpose driven life. You want to connect with this God who will make your life spectacular and your life different and bring the blessing and the honor of God upon your life. Where are you? Raise up your hand. If you are raising up your hand, stand up right there. It's a special day for you and it's a day remarkable in your life. Stand up for God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you there. Heaven is waiting for you to stand up. Heaven is waiting for you to indicate and to say, Lord, here I am. I want the glory. I want the help. And I want all that heaven has for me. Raise up your hand and stand up. While you are standing up, tell the Lord, Lord, you have called me and I come. You have invited me and I come. And I give myself unreservedly, wholeheartedly unto you. Save me. Forgive my sin. Change my life. Turn everything around in my life. You will do it now. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll give you restoration. I'll give you redemption. I'll give you righteousness. And I'll give you the right ability to respond to all my goals in life for you. Keep on standing as I pray for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you at this time. And Lord, I pray all who have come sincerely today, receive them in Jesus' name. And I pray salvation will come to them now. I pray forgiveness will come to them now. I pray the freedom from heaven will come upon their lives now in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation settle in their hearts right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It 